The set matte effect can be found underneath the channel category and I use it all the time. But if you don't understand what's actually happening with this effect, it can behave unexpectedly. So let's start by just making a new solid and I'll just make it a square white solid so that we can see it nice and clearly. And I'm going to actually apply the set matte effect to it. Now it doesn't do anything by default. We need to first specify where we're getting the matte layer from. So I'm gonna change it from the solid layer to my logo and suddenly my logo is appearing on that white solid. What's actually happening is that we're using the alpha channel of that logo layer to define the alpha channel of this solid layer. I can move my solid around and you see that that mat moves with it. And I think this is one thing that can confuse people quite a bit. If I press the letter P to bring up position and right click and say reset, it'll center the solid in the comp. I'll turn that set mat off. You can see there's my unaffected solid with the set mat on, it has that logo placed. Now, why isn't it the same size as my logo? Well, that's because I have stretch mat to fit checked. By default, that's checked. What this is doing is scaling down this logo to be the same scale as the solid. So if I just scale it down like that, you can see that now it's lining up. If I uncheck stretch mat to fit, then it lines up perfectly, but it's getting cropped off by the bounds of the solid layer. And as I move stuff around, you can see that these two layers are completely independent of each other. Doesn't matter what I do to my source of the mat, I could scale it down, rotate it, reposition it. Set mat is only looking at the untransformed version of that logo. All right, let me get back to where we were. And then we'll turn stretch mat to fit back on. Now in this case, both my logo and the solid are square, so it doesn't look stretched, it's just shrunk down. But if I were to change the solid size to be wider than it is tall, you can see that that is now stretching the logo disproportionately. So if you've ever run into that issue, now you know why. You probably need to uncheck stretch mat to fit and change the source layer's resolution or the mat's resolution so that they fit within each other. I'll undo again back to where we were. The next option is composite mat with original. And I'm actually gonna jump into another comp. In this comp, I have a photo of just some stone or concrete that I'm going to use as a mat for my logo. So this time on the logo, I'm going to apply the set matte effect and I'm going to change the take matte from layer to this photo layer. Nothing has happened yet because we're still just using the alpha channel, but if I drop down this list, we can base it on any one of these channels. And the one that I wanna use is the luminance or the brightness values of the photo. So if I click on luminance, my logo is now semi-transparent and it's based on the luminance values of the photo behind it. And to make it even more apparent, I'm going to add a levels effect to that photo and then just increase the contrast of that photo. Now, nothing has actually happened to the set matte effect because by default, we're only looking at the source of that layer. We're not taking into account any effects applied to that source. So I need to go to this drop down right here and tell After Effects, also look at the effects and masks on that layer to generate the matte for this layer. So I'm gonna change this to effects and masks and right away that transparency gets a lot more drastic. If I turn off that background photo, you can see that texture is defining the alpha channel for my logo. Now, stretch matte to fit is checked on by default, so that texture is being scaled down since this photo layer is much larger than my logo. If I want that texture to line up, then all I have to do is uncheck stretch matte to fit. And now the photo and the texture are the same size, the same scale, and the same position. Again, I cannot shift that texture around. It's always going to be centered on the layer regardless of what I do to the source. So be aware of that. But now it's at least scaled properly. The next checkbox is composite matte with original. If I uncheck that, you can see that it's basically disregarding the alpha channel that my layer originally had. It's not often that you would ever wanna uncheck that, so probably just leave that checked by default. And finally, we have the ability to pre-multiply the matte layer or not pre-multiply it. Now, the power of the set matte effect is if you had many layers that you wanted to use the same matte for, you can now apply it as an effect rather than a track matte and needing multiple instances of this layer for every one of those duplicates. So if I were to bring in the text version of my logo and copy and paste that set matte effect to it, now both of these layers are using the same source as the texture matte and whatever I do to that texture mat, like decrease the contrast, maybe pull up the midtones a little bit, will be reflected in both instances. 
And while there are some limitations to this, you just have to think about it in the right way. Imagine this mat layer is now parented to each layer that you've applied set mat to. Wherever you move the affected layer, the mat layer moves with it. And if you need to adjust the positioning of that mat source layer, you could add a transform effect. And because we have the effects and masks checked right here in the set mat effect, whatever I do with this transform is going to be reflected in the alpha mat. So if I adjust the position, you can see that it allows me to shift it around. I could scale it up or down. I could even rotate it if I wanted. The only limitation here is that the mat is going to be reflected exactly the same in both instances. And if I were to scale one of these down, the mat layer is going to scale with it. Now, if I do the same thing, but using a text or a shape layer, which are vector, meaning they're continuously rasterized, then we're gonna get a different result. So let me add the set mat effect, set mat effect to the text layer. And I'm gonna use that same texture layer as before. Uh, so I'm gonna grab that texture here. And I want to, again, change this from alpha channel to being the luminance. So we have the texture defining the alpha channel for this layer. So we're getting the semi-transparent pixels within the text, just like on my logo. But if I move that text around, you'll notice that the texture does not move with it. And it's exactly the same for the shape layer. If I copy this effect, paste it onto the shape layer and move the shape layer around, it's behaving as if that image or that texture layer was just being used as a track mat instead of it being attached to the layer like my logo over here. Now, like I said, this is because vector layers are continuously rasterized. And these are Illustrator files, which are vector layers. And if I enable the continuously rasterized switch for each of them, then we're gonna get that same effect. The texture is now no longer sticking to my logo. And this is just the way that After Effects works. Continuously rasterized layers are basically viewed by After Effects as the size of the comp. And when you move them around, things render differently. So even though we have a bounding box here, After Effects is basically looking at the bounds of the comp and saying that's where the texture needs to be applied to. And since the comp's not moving around, the texture shouldn't. So one way to get around this is to just pre-compose whatever you're applying the texture to. If you want the texture to be locked in, just pre-compose it. Control Shift C is the shortcut for pre-compose and I'll call this circle. And it's going to move all the attributes. I can't leave the attributes, but that's okay. I'll just click okay, uh, go into that pre-comp. It's moved that texture and the set matte effect into here, but I'm just gonna get rid of it really quickly. And while we're at it, let's just center that up by pressing Control Home or Command Home on a Mac, and then go to Composition Settings. And I'm gonna scale this down to say 350 by 350, so the comp matches the size of my circle a little bit better. All right, so now we have a pre-composed shape layer, so we no longer have access to that vector continuously rasterized edge. You see when I scaled it up, I now have a fuzzy edge. But let's say I'm not really worried about that, it's not gonna be scaled up. I'll apply set matte again, grab that texture layer and set it to luminance, and now the texture is stuck with it. But keep in mind, if I were to continuously rasterize that layer, my texture updated, and now that texture is not moving with it once again. So I know that behavior is a little bit weird, but just keep it in mind as you're working with these types of effects, and really any effect, if you ever expect it to be behaving a certain way and it's not, think through, is this layer vector, like a text layer or a shape layer, or is it being continuously rasterized, like a pre-comp? And just try turning off continuous rasterization and seeing if it works the way you want it to then, or pre-compose the shape layer or text layer, and nine times out of 10, that's going to fix your problem. But I use the set matte effect all the time in my own workflow. It's super convenient and a really great alternative to track mats. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video. Thank you.